Greetings hobbies, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to use geometry nodes and a couple of cool tricks to be able to distribute objects onto a surface, but control where they're going to be placed. So we could do this using most things, but I'm going to set this up as if it's a scene or a landscape, and we're just going to put some rocks on it. So for that, I'm going to shift an A, mesh, and bring in a plane, and then I'm just going to S to scale that up, and then control and A, apply the scale, and then we're going to need to subdivide this, so I'm going to go into edge mode, control and E, and then subdivide, and put that up to something like like, I don't know, 100, something like that, just so we've got something a bit smoother. And then I'm probably going to need to add a subdivision surface modifier. So we'll come over to the modifiers and do that. And we want that to be simple so it doesn't round those edges. And we'll probably keep that there. We'll have a look at how this works. And then to make this scene, we're just going to add another modifier and it's going to be a displacement modifier. Now, just before we go any further on this, I will say if you go to edit preferences, and then you come to landscape. There is a landscape maker in Blender that comes with it. You just need to activate it. I just have got used to doing this and I actually quite like it as a method because of the control it gives us. So let's talk how to do this first. If you just want to skip to the geometry node bit, feel free to use the chapters to go past this. So we want a new texture and then we're going to come to our texture tab and we're just going to change this to clouds, which has this sort of cloudy look to it which then looks rubbish and we'll go through why this looks rubbish so the main thing is that this has got a size to it and if we just change that to let's say two it's going to become a lot smoother and depending on what you want like a base or something like that you can change this scale to whatever you want i'm going to put this to something like four and then i'm going to come back to my modifier and i'm just going to up that strength a little bit to make it a little bit more exaggerated something like that should be fine and then that's probably smooth enough for this. So I'm just going to apply it all. So we've got this ready to go and we can add our points to it. Now, before I do that, let's just uh, G and Y that off to the side or X off to the side. I'm gonna create my rocks. We did a video on that in the last video. There's a link in the description if you wanna have a look at it. But all I'm gonna do is go to rock generator and we're gonna generate a rock. And that looks pretty good. We want, let's say 10, so we've got some nice variation. And while we've got those selected, we're just going to shade flat so I can see where everything is. And then I'm just going to move these sides so I can have a look at each one and check that I'm happy with it. That one's going to look a bit weird at certain angles, so let's delete that. Um, and then we've got, yeah, these are all looking pretty good for rocks. Okay, pretty happy with those. So we've got our rocks there, and the main thing that we need to do is we need this in its own collection. So what I'm going to do is select those, press M, new collection, and we'll just call this rocks. But you could call it whatever you want. And you'll notice that once we hit OK, that makes our rock collection over here. And that's us pretty much set up to go. Now we can get on with the geometry nodes. So I'm just going to bring my geometry nodes up and click on this, and we're going to click new to get a new geometry nodes. I don't know why mine always starts up really, really small. I'm not sure what I've done to make that happen. But anyway, no real problem there. So what we want to do is we're going to have this, so our plane, and we want to add our rocks to it. In fact, actually, let's get our rocks scaled to the point where we want them. So let's just S that down to about there, Control and A, and apply the scale. That's quite important. So we're going to have them about that size, maybe a bit smaller, actually. Something like that. But this will entirely depend on what you're creating. And we're going to bring in a join geometry because we're going to want to see this. And this has got our plane. And then we're going to distribute some points onto this. So I'm just going to drag that out. And we want distribute points on face. And let's add that into our join geometry so we can see where these are. And we can see we've got all of these points here. And we can either up the density or we can down the density. Okay, so that's going to be quite important about this is that we control our density here and we're going to come back to that later. So let's put that to about one for now and then we'll fiddle around with that later as I said. But we're going to want to put these rocks onto these points and to do that we just use an instance on points. Plug that in there. Our points disappear because we haven't got anything to put on it. And then we're just going to take our rock collection from up here, drag it into our geometry nodes and then we can connect this to our instances and instantly we get far too many of them we're going to tell it to pick an instance because we only want one each time and I mean separate children and reset children otherwise it goes all a bit crazy so we've got those there and we're looking pretty good now these are quite 
far down. It depends if you want to move these up, you can do that because at the moment they're working off of the origin. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. So what we're going to do is come into edit mode. So we're going to go into vertices A and then G and then Z those up so that the origin for all of them is relatively low on the rock. Now, that also won't work if you want to rotate these all around. I mean, it depends on what you want to do because you could have these, some of them, so they're totally flipped. It's entirely up to you. In fact, actually, let's talk about both of those so we're happy with them. So first one is we've got the origin quite low down here and that's where you want them to be. So they're now this far up. The other option is if we go into vertex mode, G and Z those down to somewhere around there, then in fact, actually let's for all of these apply these modifiers. So all of these rocks are made by using a modifier. And if we don't apply these, then this is gonna take a lot of processing power when we start putting hundreds of them on here. So probably easier to do it this way. The other thing we could do is if we come back to this is we could start moving these. So if we bring this, we can transform these and just move them slightly up in the Z axis. So that could be another way of doing this, but you've got to, as I say, be careful with this because you can end up with them sort of hovering in midair. But when we start rotating things, it will at least control that. So if I come here and shift A and then bring in a random value, change that to vector. And then if I bring that into my rotation, you'll notice now they're all randomly rotated, but they're still raised up slightly. And that's why you might not want to do this with the origins. If you put the origin further down and rotated it, then the rock's gonna become very buried, but then maybe that's a good thing. So you just need to make some decisions on what you want to do and how you're gonna control those origin points or the rotation. So let's move that up here. And we're gonna do the same thing with the scale. I want to have a random scale. So let's shift and D. And then we want the minimum to be, let's say 0 0.5 to be half, and then bring that into there. And then bring that into there. And now, as I say, we've got some floating here. So it's up to you whether you want to do this offset or not. For now, I'm going to just bring that out and we'll just see these top bits as if the rocks are partly buried in the dirt, which sort of makes sense for rocks. So at this point, we're looking pretty good. We've got all our instances on here and we can control how much we've got with the density so we can put more or less on. Now, this will create some points where we've got some overlap. We can change that by using a disk method where we set the minimum distance they are apart to be, let's say, I don't know, one. Okay, and then we've got at least them that far apart. Let's do 0.5. And we've still got a density factor, so we can still take that up and down. So this might be the best way to go about it, really. Okay, up to a maximum of one. So we've got our rocks, and this is where our rocks are going to be. But we're not really controlling any of this other than our overall density factor or fiddling around with our minimum and maximum distances. So well, where do we get the control? So for that, I'm gonna just bring down the geometry nodes and we're just gonna talk about this as a process. So what we're gonna want to do is have a way of telling Blender where we want all of these rocks to be. And to do that, if you come up to your view menu and you go to weight painting, we're gonna use some weight painting. And what this does is it turns everything blue and if I just draw on it, it's gonna create this weight paint. And I'll just undo that. Now, the first thing I'll do is probably bring my strength down to 0 0.5. What that means I can do is you've got green and then if I go again it's yellow and if I go again it'll go more and more and this will mean red is going to have the most and then we scale out with less and less and less rocks so this gives us lots of control I can also press F to change the size of my brush so I could say I want some rocks pretty much everywhere and just color everything in and then maybe bring that down a bit and say but I want most of the rocks in the middle and then put a higher concentration there and do something like that. So this is gonna control where our rocks will be. Where there's red, there's gonna be lots of rocks. Where there's yellow less and then green less. And if we want none, we want to change it to blue. And let's say this is gonna be a road. I want there to be no rocks down the center because the vehicles, let's say a dirt road, the vehicles, the wagons, whatever, are gonna knock the rocks out of the way. So to do that, I can just come up to this option here and we've got this draw and we can do subtract and then if I F to make that a bit smaller, we could, let's say, in fact, let's do it so two tracks. So I could actually subtract most of this out here and then 
this out here. So we've got our track. If I wanted to, I can again down the strength of this and maybe make that so it's green. So this will control where we're going to add all of our rocks, but you'll notice it's not doing anything at this point. We haven't set up the geometry nodes for this to work. Now, before we do that, just so you understand how this is working, if I come down here to my object data properties, you can see what weight painting does is it sets up a vertex group and it's already doing it here. And all of these vertex groups are, well, essentially selecting the vertices and giving them a value from, I think it's zero to one, I would assume being Blender with red being one, blue being zero and all the colors in between. Now I'm actually gonna rename this just to make it easier for me to see. So I'm just gonna call this rock dist rock distribution and then I'm going to come back into my object mode and well we can't see anything but that's fine do note you can still have your weight painting on while you have a look at your geometry nodes in fact let's keep that there just for now and what we're going to do is now tell this density factor to be controlled by our weight painting so density factor needs to go from one to into our inputs. And if I come back to my modifier panel, you can see over here, we've got our density factor and it's one or zero or anything between. We want to change this to our weight painting. So what you need to do is click on this panel here, which looks to me like an Excel symbol, but either way, and it turns it to nothing. And then we can click on here and it's got our options. And one of them is our points rock distribution. And we click on that and we've got our distribution working. And we can always go in and add to this either way. So for example, I could maybe put some more here. Oops, that's probably a bit strong. It's all the way up to one. So we could add more and more in different points. If you want your rocks being somewhere or say you've got something going on here, you can add more rocks. And what's nice about this is you can have less rocks and then as you up the strength, it gets more rocks. So this is really useful for if you want to, let's say, draw around buildings and control where your points are going to be. And it's nice because you can just sort of change and control things really easily to be able to fiddle around with this distribution. And you don't have to just do this with rocks. You could do it with any other objects. This could be craters on a really big scale if this was some sort of map that you were trying to get printed out in 3d whatever you want it could be buildings anything like that you can set it up so it works really really useful tool to be able to have now one thing i will say is and this isn't really a big problem this density factor was being controlled by the colors and if you find that there's too much here you can always do some maths to control this density factor as well so for example if i bring in a math node and let's say change this to multiply by 0 0.5 and plug that in there, everything will be halved and then I can have a bit more control. But you'll notice if you go really high, then it's going to obviously start to look a bit more of a mess than if you've got this at let's say one, where you've got things from one to well zero. But either way, multiply is the way to go because otherwise your blues will get a value on them as well. So either way, you can fiddle around with this and you can still fiddle around with your poison disc if you want to reduce some of the distance or you're finding they're too clumped up together. Now, if you want to change this into one node, what I would suggest you do is you have your geometry there, your density factor control there, and then I would probably put my minimum distance for my poison disc there. I'd have my multiply value there, and I would have my instance choice probably somewhere here. So I've got my collection going in there. I might actually probably put the collection at the top. So if you change your group and go to collection and then put that up to the top and we can change all the names. So for example, I could name this instance collection. Density factor is here gonna be the weight painting, but we could change that if we wanted to. Then I've got my instance min distance there. And this value is going to be my density multiplier. So now those are all to the side and we can control them as we want. And we can obviously set minimums and maximums for these as we normally would. For example, that density multiplier should be a minimum of zero. And same thing with our instance minimum and density factor should all be fine. So that's how to set that up. What you are gonna to need to do, and this is gonna be an important one, is you do need to here realize your instances. So realize instances, plug that in there, 
and that's going to mean that your instances get realized. But the second you do that, the weight painting stops working. So if you want this to work, what you're really gonna need to do is set up a switch so this functions, and then you can tell it to confirm everything. So to set this up as a switch, we have done this before. We're gonna use a math node where we're going to compare this, and we need a switch node. So we've got a switch. Let's bring that in there. And we want this to be, nope, we want this to be on the true, we're gonna realize the instances. On the false, we're going to not realize the instances. And then the switch is gonna be based on an input value. So we'll bring that in here. This value, we want the epsilon to be zero because it's either gonna be on or off. Epsilon is how much either side it can be off a value. So we want it to be on if it's a one. And we're going to put the value into our inputs. Come over here, let's change this name to one to realize. And then we want that to zero. We want it to be anywhere between zero to one. And we'll put the default as zero. And then we put that to there. So at the moment, nothing's being realized. And then we change this to one. And then it's all realized. And I will change that actually to an integer just to make this really easy to do. So it's either on or off. And that means we can change this as we go, but we need to turn that on for it to work. If I just show you with this not on, if I apply this, everything disappears. If I turn it on and then apply this, everything's left there. So if you're gonna use this for 3D printing, that's very, very important. So here's the geometry node setup that we've just made in full. So it's easier for you to copy if you want to use this. Hopefully the explanation has made all of those choices make sense, or at least given you an idea of why we use them. Though this possibly isn't the most beginner friendly start to geometry nodes. It's not actually that complicated, and it's a lot of fun to be able to use this to give you that control. If you do want a copy of this geometry node setup without having to make it yourself, it is available on the Patreon. And any support there is really, really appreciated. Even if you don't want the files, you just want to say thanks for creating the videos, it's really appreciated. If you don't want to head over to the Patreon or you've got no spare cash at the moment, just giving the video a like if you found it helpful is also really great. It helps YouTube know to share the video with other people who will hopefully find this interesting as well. Have a great day, guys.